I'm not a mechanic, I'm not an engineer. What the hell? Ugh, oh no, god damn it, no! Are those cleaning supplies? Yeah, sometimes I get a little bit too fucked up and I, um, I drink it. Also, what the fuck? I don't know, I get fucked up and I see the word alcohol and colorful liquid and the rest is history. You are being serious. Yes. What the fuck? Wait, hold on. A voice now. What is good, cocksucker? <laughs> oh, excuse me for a minute. Why would you throw a shock put at my car? Yeah, maybe next time your car will be less shock portable. I don't know. <laughs> Anywho, enjoy the little friend I made you. Let it serve as another reminder that you are an autistic roulette wheel of inconsistencies. <laughs> Intoxicated me would totally make something like you despite me. Oh my non relevant Jesus, why? Because then I'll never figure out how he did it. Oh, got another voicemail. Is it possible to steal your own identity? Aristotle once said, Quality is not an act, quality is the Bucket Man Show. In the format of Magic the Gathering Arena, known as Timeless. Feel the play so fast if you fail to develop your game plan by turn two, you'll be dead by turn four. More often than not, a game of quick draw. In a format such as this, you have two general methods of attack. One is to develop control over the game very quickly. The second, aggro. Aggro hard. Today I've brought a deck that serves the latter. Today we throw on our cloak, grab a comically oversized hammer, and shove a legendary hard drive up our ass. In a deck known only as... The Cryptic Hammer. You see, with this deck, our goal is very simple. Our deck wins by taking highly evasive creatures and equipping them with very powerful weapons. With weapons such as the Colossus Hammer, an equipment that gains a creature plus 10 plus 10 and only costs one mana. Its expensive equip costs mended by things like Sigarda's Aid and Kemba's Outfitter. We also utilize the Cryptic Cloak, an equipment without an equip cost. That factor also mended by things like Sigarda's Aid and Kemba's Outfitter. Finally, we have the Reality Chip the final equipment of the package. This provides us with the card advantage we need in case we find ourselves out of resources. Our tutor package being one demonic tutor and three Kellen the Fey blooded, using its adventure half as a tutor for equipments, while its creature half can also be used as an effective backup plan. So now we delve into a game, a game that will be truly judged in the end by he who swings the bigger hammer. Between the card advantage, the ramp, the tutor, and the Kemba's outfitter, his hand is perfect. We will begin by playing and popping a polluted delta to shock a godless shrine into play, and we will follow that up by casting a death right shaman. Our opponent plays a forest and then follows that up by suspending and crashing footballs. We will play and pop a polluted delta, grabbing ourselves a hollowed fountain and shocking it into play. Then we will float a white mana with death right shaman by exiling a fetch land from our graveyard. We will then use that white mana to Cast Birthright Boon, search for a Colossus Hammer, and put it into our hand. We will then close out the turn by casting Kemma's Outfitter, using its ability to reduce the equip cost of the Colossus Hammer in our hand. Our opponent spends their turn making a land drop and then passes the turn. Now here is where things come together for us, as I'm sure you can tell by the excitement in my voice. First and foremost, we will cast a second Kemba's Outfitter, reducing the equip cost of the reality chip to one. We will then cast the Colossus Hammer, following that up by exiling a land from our graveyard with Deathrite Shaman. To float one white mana to equip the Colossus Hammer to our Kemba's Outfitter. We've now arrived at the step of aggression. We will attack our opponent for 12, reducing them to 8 life. 
that there's seeming to be a harder hit than the one I took the other day. All right, what are we smoking today? Armageddon. Hmm, never heard of it. Eh, what's the worst that could happen? <sighs> I could use some fresh air. why they call that strain Armageddon. Do you get it? It was not referencing the hit of marijuana, but the hit from the several meteors that fell from the sky and crushed my body. Our opponent plays a surveil land and passes the turn, continuing to not add any excitement or edge to the game at all. Proceeding to our turn, we will cast the reality chip from our hand, followed by shocking in an overgrown tomb. We will then equip reality chip to the Kemba's outfitter equipped Colossus Hammer. We have stepped into the world of the abnormal, where our opponent is taking action. By discarding the Colossal Sky Turtle to its channel ability, bounce our Kemba's Outfitter to our hand. This person here, what we refer to as a fucking cock. <clears throat> I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I let that one slip. We will correct ourselves for that rude outburst by exiling the Colossal Turtle from their graveyard with our Deathrite Shaman. A definitive correction for foul language. Shit. We will make the best of a bad situation by swinging in with our Kemba's Outfitter for two, and then passing the turn. Our opponent drops a wooded foothills, and then proceeds to cast Fable of the Mirror Breaker, creating a 2-2 goblin with treasure-making ability on its first tick of the saga. Now, as familiar as I am with the concept of putting all your eggs in one basket, you're going to attach each of these equipments onto the battlefield to Kemba's Outfitter. Being equipped to the creature allows Reality Chip's static ability to activate and allows us to play cards from the top of our library. So in the spirit of using the card advantage before it disappears, we will cast this Ornithopter from the top of our library, followed by casting Sigardisade from the top of our library as well. Cast behind that is a Retrofitter Foundry, also from the top of our library. And now we seem to have a great element to take advantage of, the element of surprise. Being that Colossus Hammer is on the top of our library, and the Reality Chip allows us to cast cards from the top of our library, and Sigardizade allows us to cast equipment spells at flash speed, while its second half equips it at flash speed. So all we have to do is get through blockers and see who we equipped it to. Our opponent pops their wooded foothills, shocking a Sacred Foundry into play. Well, blockers have been declared, so we will flash in the Colossus Hammer, and equipped it to the unblocked Kemba's Outfitter. Our opponent reveals their intentions with their untapped land, by flashing in a Leyline Binding to remove our Kemba's Outfitter. It seems the time has come for our opponent's crashing footfalls to come off of suspension, placing two Rhino Tokens into play. Then the second step of the saga, Fable the Mirror Breaker, will activate, allowing our opponent to discard up to two cards and draw that many. Uh-oh, I've got to save some trouble. Cause here comes the trouble, mate! That is what went through my head when I saw our opponent play Oka, who is truly living up to their name as a thief, by robbing us of our ability to equip our cheap Colossus Hammer by turning it into a 3-3 Elk. Now it's time to re-establish our position. We will cast Kemba's Outfitter, reducing the equip cost of the Colossus Hammer on the battlefield to one. Then we will equip the Colossus Hammer to the Flying Ornithopter, doing the same with the Reality Chip. Now we are presented with a silver lining. On the downside, our opponent is using a Leyline Binding to remove our threat. On the plus side, they have no cards in their hand and it will become increasingly difficult for them to keep up with us, while we ourselves still have plenty of routes of action to take. First of which being to equip the Kemba's Outfitter with the Reality Chip. Now that we have the Reality Chip re-equipped, we can proceed to cast card from the top of our library. First of which being the Ornithopter. Then we will place the Sea Chrome Coast from the top of our library into play tap. Next we will cast the Ornithopter that exists in our hand. And finally, we will equip the Colossus Hammer to our 3-3 Elk Hammer creature, and then declare an attack with it. Our opponent pops their wooded foothills, grabbing themselves a breeding pool into play tap. At the dawn of our opponent's turn, their Fable the Mirror Breaker transforms on the last step of its saga. Our opponent once again utilizing their Oko to turn our hammer to a 3-3 elk. However, the fact that they're at 2 light 
significantly takes away from the loss of losing a plus 10 plus 10 buff. Next, our opponent displays their distaste for the concept of a poker face by dropping the last card in their hand, which is a land. Now on the end of our opponent's turn, we will activate the Retrofitter Foundry, sacrificing one of our Ornithopters to make a 4-4 Construct creature. Now call me crazy, but the odds are not looking great for our opponent here to survive. That point emphasized by us casting this Cryptic Cloak, which upon entering the battlefield will immediately equip to the 4-4 Construct creature, thanks to Sigarda's aid. Now what we have done here is presented an armada, an armada comprised of two hammer elks, a cat, an unblockable robot, and a thing in disguise. What this? Question just remains, how will our opponent react? We emerge from game one victorious after the overwhelming force of our armada pressured our opponent into suicide. But now we must keep it going. It being the game pressure, not prompting them to suicide. For this matchup, we will side in our two spell pierces, two juggernaut peddlers for troublesome cards in their hand, and two Lavinia Azorius renegades to counteract their free spells. We will side out one ornithopter, one retrofitter foundry, one reality chip, a cryptic cloak, a keelan, and a deathright shaman. What we hold in our hands here is another perfect hand. We've got the lands, we've got the weapons, and if we don't draw a body, we can tutor it up. Our opponent plays and pops Windswept Heath to shock a Temple Garden into play, then casts Incubation, which allows them to look at the top five cards of their library for a creature. We will play and pop our Bloodstained Mire, shocking into play a Godless Shrine, and then casting Retrofitter Foundry. Our opponent begins their turn by shocking into play a Steam Bed and immediately goes for the removal of the Retrofitter Foundry by means of the Leyline Binding. We are going to take advantage of this very opportune moment while our opponent is tapped out to cast Demonic Tutor to search for a Sigarda's aid. Our opponent plays and pops a Wooded Foothills to grab a Lush Portico to surveil one. Next, they cast a Sorcerer's Spyglass, naming the Colossus Hammer. So while now we cannot pay the equip cost to equip the hammer, we can still equip it by means of Sigarda's aid. We will play and pop the polluted delta, shocking into play an overgrown tomb, and then proceed to cast the cryptic cloak. Our opponent spends the entirety of their turn casting Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Well, if that's the best our opponent can do, I think they're in trouble. We will first cast the Sigarda's Aid, followed up by immediately casting the Colossus Hammer, which upon entering the battlefield will attach immediately to the cryptic cloak creature because of Sigarda's Aid. We will then cast a Deathrite Shaman with the mentality of thinking of a long game. Then we will play a Sacred Foundry tapped, and then proceed to swing with our unblockable 13 power creature. Now what is a man to do when struck by an unblockable force such as this? Twelve angry men! Oh, 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 oh god! Oh, I feel terrible! Holy shit! Oh, oh, oh. Oh god, what happened? Did I finish the episode? Did I win? What the hell? Oh no. <laughs> Great, so I went on a Mr. Clean drinking binge. Wonderful. Well, at this point, a little hair of the dog that cleaned my floor. Hey, have you seen my comb? Oh, what are you drinking? Uh... Is that cleaning spice? No, 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 you don't understand. What the fuck could that possibly be? I did a whole thing. What the fuck? I was Ron Sterling. Who the fuck is Ron Sterling? I did a Twilight Zone. Twilight Zone? What the fuck? Thank you for watching the episode. Please do not forget to like, comment, follow, and subscribe if you enjoyed this content. Please do not forget to follow the Instagram as well. Thank you so much. I appreciate you more than you know. I will see you next time.